So, I love I love that line. Got, if you're going to have an octopus, have a magical one. You know, like like it's normal to have an octopus. <laughs> of course it is. Power to live more with Joe Dodds. Welcome to the Power to Live More podcast, all about productivity, organisation, well-being, energy, and resilience. I'm Jo Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello, my name is Ellie Dodds and I'm co-presenter. And today, Joe is interviewing Stephen Foster of The Magic Octopus. Joe and Stephen met via LinkedIn, and Joe thought Stephen sounded really interesting, so he was keen to get him on the show. As MD of The Magic Octopus, Stephen helps small businesses, brands, and celebrities create social web content, create marketing campaigns, write motivational books, make records, and solve problems. Stephen's had a varied career, and Describes some of the interesting parts and highlights as promoted some of the UK's biggest dance events with his company, Dreamscape, been in a boy band, wished he was in a successful boy band, swept floors in a factory, managed act on X Factor and written contestant songs, flown Concord, written hit records including one pop idol winner's record, drank champagne with Charles and Liz at Buck House, you mean Prince Charles and Queen Elizabeth? <laughs> you mean Buckingham Palace. At yeah. Buckingham Palace. Yes. Been drunk champagne with Prince Charles and Queen Elizabeth II at Buckingham Palace. Been to rock bottom twice. Ran 10 marathons, including London, eight times. Ran 25 half marathons. Cycle from John O'Groats to Land's End. Started a business with Duncan Bannatyne. Ended a business with Duncan Bannatyne, packed cassette tapes, been on the front of newspapers, packed newspapers, stood outside Radio 1 singing to Scott Mills in his boxer shots whilst painted green, built a record label, owned a clothing label, now he's running around disguised as a stormtrooper and being the magic octopus. So, as you can see, a wide range of things. Back to the studio! Today I'm interviewing Stephen Foster of The Magic Octopus. So welcome Stephen, thanks for joining me. Hi Jo, thank you for having me. I'm so um, pleased to introduce somebody from a company called The Magic Octopus. <laughs> it's such a cool name. So tell us a bit more about you. you and about what you do and, and where, where that name came from. Well The Magic Octopus, um, we're a digital company um, and basically we focus on creating content for small businesses. You know these days everyone's got social media, everyone's got a website but we got into actually creating content so then you could uh, you could talk to your customers and prospects by using um, great social media and film and animation and in some respects we're also um, an outsource marketing department for larger brands as well. So. Um, we, we kind of handle every aspect of, of uh, either a small business's digital output or, or, or larger or larger businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the name Magic Octopus came about because I'm also a songwriter. I've written songs for years, uh, and I wrote a song called "Me and My Magic Octopus." And and, and as I was writing, it, I thought, "Oh, Magic Octopus! That's a, an interesting um, name for for a digital brand rather than." Yeah. you know ABC digital you know and a lot of people comment on it and it's 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 a bit like the that book you know the purple cow you know sometimes you've got to come up with something that does stick in in people's minds and and we found that with with the octopus and yeah you know, if you're gonna have an octopus make it magical you know so um and he is and he's funky and that that's that's kind of I, I'm always a great believer that your your brand and business is a complete reflection of, of you it has mm-hmm. to be because you know you are the business, and really the magic octopus is is a reflection of me. You know, it's, yeah. it's uh, it is what it yeah. is. So, I love I love that line. Well. If you're going to have an octopus, have a magical one. You know, like like it's normal to have an octopus. 
<laughs> of course it is. <laughs> you, you don't have one? <laughs> yeah. No, like, we, we love it. I like the idea of the eight, eight tentacles, um, you know, implying that you can manage multiple projects all at the same time as well. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, eight's always been my lucky number. I was my birth date was all eights, ah. it, uh, and it's just been a recurring theme. And it's the sign for infinity as well, ah, um, yeah. and and it's worshipped by the Chinese in in terms of a number. So so it has that kind of um, lucky lucky aspect about it. So you know that that was another reason that it has, yeah. it has eight tentacles. Lovely. So tell us a bit more about where you run your business. Is it something uh, that you do from home, or you're in an office? How how does that all work? Um, no, I have a team. Um, we we have an office, but but these days I, I've I've found like today I'm at home. You know, I can I can just open up my laptop or and and work from wherever I am. You know, mm. we're we're a digital based business, and it's not location um, dependent. No, you know, I do have a goal of of buying a place abroad and and splitting my time between the two the two because you know these days that the marketplace has changed and you you can be anywhere doing doing business yeah my customers don't care as long as they can get me instantly on email or, or messenger or something that yeah they're fine with it mm, yeah. so um, yep. it's a great thing it's one of the it's one of the positives of technology I think there are a few negatives but I think that in terms of being able to be wherever you want to be is a great thing. So I do have a, an office with a team, but but I also float around, as I call it. <laughs> with your eight tentacles. <laughs> no, let's not carry on with that. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> <laughs> so uh, it strikes me, um, as with a number of the people I talked to on the podcast, that you will therefore have different uh, types of days because you're in you know different places for working and I guess you're sometimes with clients as well so how do you how yeah. do you sort of start your day do you have a, a routine that that's sort of fairly consistent or does it vary depending on what you're up to it does differ, it does vary depending on what I'm up to and, and where I am but I've always been a great believer was well, certainly in the last 10 years that it's about getting up early and getting on it so um, and I never used to be that person being a musician I was always <laughs> kind of out of bed whenever I felt it but uh, you know I can I feel so much more um, productive first thing so I tend to try and get to the office around 7 um, 7.30 something like that um, and the team start at 8 so that by 9 when everyone else is getting in we've already you know cleared our emails and we're on to something and I've always felt that that's, that's a cool thing to do ahead of the game yeah um, so you know, as early as I possibly can. Although, uh, but then some days it changes. You know, I might work till you know midnight, one in the morning, and then you know I'll get up later. You know, mm. um, so did that know, change? It, it's whatever feels good. Yeah. So did that change to the mornings come about sort of very specifically, or is it just something that that evolved? It came about very specifically by me reading what other entrepreneurs, very successful entrepreneurs, did. Yes. And a lot of them will get up and get in the gym first thing in the morning and away they go. Um, so so I was really trying to educate myself in, you know, you know, you over there, how do you do it? You know, how do you how are you successful? Oh, you're getting out of bed at six AM, okay. You know, oh and, and, and ten other people are that have, have you know built successful businesses, there must be something in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I started to apply, apply that myself and um you know, you know it, 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 the mind is definitely sharper first thing in the morning. I found. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, interesting, given as you say that you were uh, sort of the other way around from the uh, sort of musician lifestyle sort of thing. I, I'm I'm not a morning person, and I, I have tried it, and I do like it on those days where I can't sleep, and I end up getting up really early unintentionally, but I still can't bring myself to do it intentionally. <laughs> but I tell you what. I tell you what's yeah. what got a lot to do with it that I found is diet. Right. If I'm eating clean, then I'm get up a lot earlier. Yes. You know, if, if yeah. I don't, if, if I'm a bit sluggish, you know, on often that, that's down to diet. But um, yeah, I, I like the feeling it gives me as well of being up. Yeah. You know, um, mm -hmm. being up and on it. Yeah. It doesn't happen every day. I must have. And so some days I'm just like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just not not moving anywhere. But then my phone's still on at seven, and I'm still working even if I'm in bed. Yes. You yeah. Know, it's from the moment I wake up, I'm I'm thinking, you know, yeah. and 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 you know, is thinking working? I think it is because that's what I do. I think I create, you know, I create ideas. So, um, you know, yeah, that, mm -hmm. that that's kind of how it works. 
Mm-hmm. And what about at the end of the day for yourself and also for your team? Because you, you're say, saying that your team, you know, do start work a little bit earlier than than sort of average uh, businesses. So, so how does the end of the day happen? Is it uh, very much a, a sort of hard stop, or is it more flexible? For the team, they finish at four, um, uh, maybe four thirty. But I try and make it four o'clock. Uh, and on a Friday, sometimes it's a half day, you know. And I've structured it that way, so it's like because you know, with employees that work for me, you know, they want to go and have a life. So if you can be out of the office at four, you 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 know, you're 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 out and you know, you're doing mm. something. Yeah. Uh, and, and so and sometimes you know, with, with my with my you know, with my top people, you know, it's like they'll take their mobile, their laptop, and they'll go and work from home, or they're going to do something else. Uh, you know, and that comes down to trust. And I, and I, and I honestly believe that that when you have team, you know, people in the team that you trust, that's part of it. Yeah. You know, it's like okay, you know, okay, go and do your thing. You know, as long as the work gets done, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not bothered. I, you know, in our business. You know, we don't clock in and clock out. It, it's, 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 it's a lot of it's done on, uh, on trust. And you know, people are human beings. You know, some days they're not going to feel good as another day. Um, they're not going to feel as productive. So on those days, we'll just, you know, go, go and go and do something else. Yes. And I find it works. Yeah. I think if I employed, you know, a hundred people, there might be a different scenario, but. I know Branson, and I read a thing from him that he's taught people he allows them to have whatever holiday they want, yes. um, as long as it doesn't interfere with their business. Uh, and um, you know, so I'm trying to, as we grow as a business, I'm trying to create a culture of, of that type of environment that, that actually, is, you know, it's not for employees. It's not all about work. It is they they want to do other things, and hopefully, if they they can see that fleet freedom and flexibility, they'll 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 then you know apply themselves more when they are working. You know, when you're working, work. Don't sit there checking Facebook or email, you know phone or whatever when you're there work. Yeah. And you, you, that laser focus, you can get more done. Yeah. So it's not about number of hours; it's about the the quality of the work, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, see, music to my ears as an engagement specialist <laughs> to hear what you're doing there um, is, and that whole bring your whole self to work and and people have a life outside of work and and you know enabling that is. Uh, is great and you know as you say it may be harder as you get as you get bigger but uh you know don't lose it <laughs> your, your organization sounds well no, no. get it right well if, if that's happen, you know i'll try and build a culture of wheeling people out that, that take the mickey you know it's it's mm-hmm. or well, hopefully i'll make the right decision when i employ them you know I, yeah. I don't know at the moment it kind of works so yeah. that that's what we're doing yeah. and you know, I want people to feel valued and, and loved. You know. Yeah, lovely. So, what about you then? So, they they all go off doing their their life. <laughs> do you do you find it easy to to have a sort of hard finish, or or are you sort of continually, uh, I don't know, challenged on that, like a lot of us are with our home uh, with our own businesses? Yeah, it never ends. <laughs> it doesn't end at four o'clock. It it ends when I go to sleep. You know, I'm always thinking. I'm always, you know, digesting what I'm doing, what I've done that day, or, you know, so, so. And I don't think it can be any other way. I often believe in a work-life balance for myself because it is just what I do. Mm. So, so I'm always doing it. What else would I want to do? You know, yeah. because if building a business which is, is which is a reflection of you and is is fun, and it's not always fun, but but. You know, if it's a reflection of you, that then then it is you. So what else am I going to do? Yeah. You know, if I'm getting pleasure from it, why? You know, but I do other things, of course. But even if I'm doing other things, I'm still in the back of my subconscious mind. It's still ticking away. I, you know, ideas are still coming, and I'm writing them down. And yeah, that nev that process never ends. Mm. But sometimes it is good mentally to take yourself, try and take yourself away. Yes. Yeah. But I don't. I don't have a view that I stop work at four o'clock or five o'clock. I'm always just working. No. Yeah. And no. And, and, and I enjoy it. Yes. Which <laughs> few. <laughs> uh, otherwise, that would be that would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, what about getting things done? How do you make sure that uh, you're getting the right things done uh, during during your days? 
Well, I read a great book by Brian Tracy called uh, Eat, that F Eat That Frog, I think it was. Yeah. And that was always about doing the most difficult, challenging thing first, first off. And it's something that I have developed over the years, and 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 that is, you know, I do I do create a list of, um, you know, things things that the critical things. You know, you can't always get everything done. So it's you know, what is the most critical to to what I need to achieve and attack those first. You know, it's, it sounds perfect, but and it's not. You know, some days, you know, I'll just sit there and it's like I, I can't do anything. And I, I remember the guy from Yo Sushi, Simon Woodruff, um, saying the same thing. You know, some days he just sits at his desk and I'm, I just, you know, it doesn't happen. And I think I've learned that that's actually okay. And then some days I'm massively, my output is huge. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, when, so you know, I try and create. Go on. So I was going to say, so those days when it when it doesn't happen, what what, what do you do? Do you go with it or do something? Uh, I. Yeah, yeah, I've allowed myself to to go with it because you know I, if you start forcing things, forcing the gates, and the trouble is, then you you just you get an inharmonious um, reaction. So so the in in my my opinion, the thing to do is when it's not working, then just leave it. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. But don't push it. Yeah. Be, be, because you know it, it is it is it, yeah there is no destination. It's just an ongoing process. Um, you know, if I'm honest, today I've had one of those days where actually I went to hot yoga this morning, and then I walked the dog, and then went for coffee because I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't feeling doing my hundred things I've got to do. Yeah. And that's okay. You know, and I think that a lot of small business owners sit there and they feel that they've got to do. You haven't got to do anything. You know, sometimes you know, listen to what your mind is telling you or your body's telling you, and go with that, yeah. rather than feeling the pressure of I must sit here and I must do this. I must. You know, no, no, no. I've always, you know, I, I've, certainly over the last 10, 15 years, I've just gone with how I feel. Yeah. And then sometimes, you, you know, because it can only be, you know, sometimes you do the right thing at the right time and you get amazing results. And I'd rather have those moments than sit there trying to force it because because, because then you get frustrated and, and frustration creates more frustration. So I don't know if that's right or wrong, but for me it works. You know, sometimes I just don't bother. How much do you think that's come about because you're in a sort of creative industry where you need to have those sort of moments of inspiration? Yeah, well, I've learned who I am, and that is that, that I am a creative person. So therefore, sometimes I don't feel like being creative. And then other times on a Sunday morning, I'll be in the office at 10 a.m. And, and creating all day. Mm, mm. Um, so, so I've learned that actually, you, you know, it kind of just to go with the flow. Yeah. You know, like, it's like a river, you know, just go with the flow of the... Uh, uh, of, the, of the experience and, and see what happens, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, my particular favourite interviews on these podcasts are the ones where people are sharing, you know, learnings over being in business for a period of time because it's just interesting, isn't it? How much you change and how much, if you're aware of things around you, things change over yeah. time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When I first started in business, I was very aggressive. I was only 19 and I was very, very in a rush to do everything, to get everything done. And then I kind of woke up maybe in my mid-30s and became, you know, slightly, well, not, you know, more spiritual in terms of my beliefs and in terms of what I could create as a person. Uh, and since then, I've really just, you know, I've just tried to relax mm. into, into what I do mm -hmm. and, uh, and have fun with it. Rather than it must be done like this. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we cannot we, we cannot say what the outcome's gonna be. We can only do our best in the moment. Yeah. Um, so I found that, that actually base, rushing, that? <laughs> that we didn't believe that was was a thing when we were young. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, yeah, but you know, I tripped up so many times in my twenties and thirties that actually it didn't work. So I learned from that that actually, well, what's the point then? Mm. I may as well just enjoy what I'm doing and see what happens. Mm. And um, and the great Warwick Davis told me that you know I've done a lot of business with Warwick. You know, he was in Star Wars and Harry Potter, and I, I had a business with him. And his thing was 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 just expect nothing and just just love what you do and stay in the moment. Yeah. And I find that from a lot of top entrepreneurs, celebrities, business owners, that sort of thing, you know, uh, a lot of them don't. Well, sorry, some of them don't, but a lot of them do. They 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 just focus on on the moment. Yeah. And that's where your power is.
Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of what you know I try and live by now is just just a little bit more kind of laid back because you know one day it will soon be over and, and you know and and I want to have looked back and actually gone yeah I actually enjoyed the journey rather than focused on on the outcome all the time. Yeah, yeah. So you've talked a bit about sort of things um, that you're doing physically to keep yourself. Uh, healthy I mean you're already talking about um, sort of I guess a bit of mindfulness you've talked about yoga you've mentioned uh, you know you're eating um, what do you do to, to keep yourself healthy to, to make sure that you're uh, you know firing on all cylinders as it were well the first thing is Bikram yoga I do it four times a week and for me that that, that was a game changer um, because it is it's you know it's in 40 40 odd degree heat um, so in it, it just silenced my mind you know when I went into that so anybody listening if you can go to hot yoga oh my god go it's incredible so I did that and and you know for the last two months I've been eating clean in terms of no no sugar or carbs and whatever and I found that you know that stabilizes the mind yeah um, and, I, and also you know I go to the gym five six times a week religiously and and I've run ten marathons in the last 12 years, wow! Um, eight, eight London marathons, 25 half marathons. You know, cycle from John O'Groats to Lands End. You know, I'll do, I'll do a lot of. You know, it. it I focus, I focus these days on, on what makes me feel good. Yes. Um, and that also, and that's become, you know, a bit of a, of a lifestyle for me. So. You know, I'm always, I'm always, and I go to meditation as well. <laughs> is it, you know, a bit because I find because I'm creative, my mind is is sometimes so overactive. If I'm not careful, it crashes because I'm constantly thinking, constantly doing stuff. So, so I, I've learned to to do those things that, that negate that and, and exercise and eating healthy and um, you know doing yoga for me works. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's just become habits now. You know, I don't even think about going to the gym or think about going to yoga. Oh God, I must go. It's just they're just habits. Um, and and you know, I love them. And if I don't do them, then I get really edgy. Yeah. You know, my body my body requires it now. So so it's just become who I am. I don't need, don't even think about it. Yeah. And yeah. it makes me more productive and work. I don't know how you fit it all in. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I I tell you what. One of the things I do is normally about half eleven. I go to the gym, right, for, for an hour, an hour and a half. Because if I start at seven, by half eleven, I've already done four, four and a half hours. And if it's if it's quality, yes, quality production time. By half eleven, I'm, I'm my brain's starting to get a bit tired. Yeah. So I don't sit there forcing it. It's like okay, we'll go to the gym now for an hour and a half. You know, and I'll see them, and I'll pick it up again at one or two or whenever, or you know, and I'll go like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because mental health is just as important as physical health, uh, and, and 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 I have suffered in the past with my mental health, so I I, I only do things that 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 look after it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's yeah. that's paramount for me. Yeah. So you've talked a lot about sort of changes through your life, and and you've you've mentioned a, a few sort of mentors and and. Uh, books you've read and, and and how you've changed things as a result of that or what sort of things are you doing to sort of find this stuff out to learn to improve yourself ongoing the thing is education is a lifelong thing when I was at, when I was younger at school I never bothered with school and I never educated myself and I only started becoming more successful when I started to read um, and now you know I'm reading at least a book a week I was reading three books a week but back back some time ago, but yeah, I just found it was it was too much. But I'm always reading a book a week, mm. um, because because if you read a book a week over the course of ten years, you know you, you've learned a lot of information, and there you can then you can then you be you your 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 stock raises in terms of the the income you can earn because because you know more. Yeah. And most people don't bother to read or educate themselves so that's that's a for me that's an amazing tip that actually you can become skilled um, in anything just by by reading and then applying 
Yeah. So I'm 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 constantly uh, you know in books. I've just read a great book now called Rejection Proof, about this guy that went out and uh, purposely went out to get rejected to overcome his fear of rejection. He put it into a book, and and one of the videos went viral that he did, and he became a bit of a, a minor celebrity in the U.S. Yeah. You know because that's always been a thing for me. Rejection. You know I don't nobody likes it, but you know. And then I read that, and I picked up maybe four or five uh, quality tips you know rejection that then I apply you know yeah. and, and 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 I find it is also immensely relaxing to, to read it does take you to a different different place yeah. but I'm not reading novels I, I'm, re I'm reading stuff that's going to develop me yeah be it. and in my chosen in my chosen field be a bit you know digital um, you know or, or performance mm. really mm. and it and it makes a huge difference yeah, it's funny. I when you know when people sometimes do those, what's your perfect day look like type exercises with me? Mine's always really easy. It's just somewhere to sit and read. <laughs> it's <Nice>. really simple. <laughs> Isn't that a great thing? Yeah. You know, you're just feeding your mind and you're relaxing. And you know, I, I love going to a coffee shop, just sitting there for an hour with the book. I, I find I find rejuvenated. You know, yeah. after after that. Yeah. So. I, I, you know, I kind of think, you know, if you said to me 15 years ago, sat there reading a book, you know, I'd have thought, God, that's what somebody, an old person would do. <laughs> but actually, you know, when you're younger, but actually, it's not. It's what it's what the it's what the it's what the quality people are doing. They're reading, yeah. they're educating, they're improving their skills, and you know, there's a great thing by Will Smith that said, you know, that that, that all the problems of life can be solved by either running or reading. Running because you know, when you're running and you get that voice that goes like, oh, I want to stop, I want to stop. You know, you've got to learn to shut it out and keep going. Mm. And reading, because if you've ever got a problem, it's in a book somewhere. Someone else previously has had that problem, written it down and put it in a book. So if you educate yourself, you can solve the problems. Yeah. The, and we all have problems. That's 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 life. Yeah. So reading reading is is fundamental. Um, and I enjoy it now, you know. And I, 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 you know, and then I pick up stuff, and then there's nothing better than reading a book and then actually applying it, and then teaching other people what you've learned. Yeah. And then seeing them, and seeing them improve, you know. It's amazing. interesting. It's interesting as you say. I, I obviously I've I've read my whole life, as, and I'd sort of take a similar view to you. Uh, but it's just reminded me of you know how much information we have at our fingertips now. You know, particularly with the internet and and being able to Google things and that sort of thing. And, and it never ceases to amaze me how many times people ask me something, and I Google it and find out the answer and give them the answer. And I can't understand why they don't cut out the middleman and just do it themselves. But I, now you're making me think. It's because if you're used to reading to find things out if you think about learning styles I, I'm very much theorist pragmatist so I like to and it sounds like you're similar I like to read stuff and then try it out that may be yeah. why I would naturally look stuff up and try and work it out whereas other people because they're more perhaps activist would be asking somebody else to explain or show them how to do something yeah I think it's slightly lazy if I'm honest you know, anybody, you, 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 you know, if somebody says, "Oh, you know, not not from your part," but if someone's asking that question, you know, it's obvious, isn't it? Or to me, you know, just that you go and look for the answer. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it always seems a bit odd yeah. that people can't Google something themselves. But then, oh, but I actually, I, I've had an example recently. I think googling actually is a is a skill. I think. Um, if you do enough of it, you get better at finding information. And so I've had people, yes, it was a bit lazy that the person asked me to find it, but it was because they couldn't find what they were looking for. And uh, I do think there's probably some experience that makes finding things easier. A bit like, I guess, why librarians get qualified to be librarians. It's not just about organising books in order, is it? <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say what it is, in my opinion, I think it's the quality of the question you ask as well. Yes. And and. Google is just about asking questions, and, and a lot of people sometimes um, uh, are confused by the answers they get, and I think it's because they're not asking the right question. Mm. Uh, you know, if you clearly state what it is you want, you, you, you'll probably find it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. Okay, so let's sort of move ourselves away from some of that uh, deep stuff that we're talking about and think practically now. So what about sort of tools and apps and, and things that you're using to enable you to do the stuff you need to do what what examples have you got what uh, recommendations have you got of those well I, I, I'm, I'm a deep lover of the iPhone uh, and on there there's a great app called a note 
so so and then you can you know it's basically for jotting down stuff and you know you 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 know to do list diary you know you can turn it into whatever you want it's only about two ninety nine I think but but I use it constantly you know if I get an idea you know and oftentimes you know that idea comes from you know just flashes in you know and I may not have a pen and paper with me so it's it always goes straight into there. Mm. Um, I also put my goals in some, into, into there as well and review them and, and, and my, my thoughts as well in terms of, you know, what was, you know, was I good enough to, you know, was I, did I apply myself well enough today, you know, what could I do better, what, you know, so it, it's, it's become a, a bit of a journal as well, so I would, you know, and I would encourage anybody to, to, to write down their experiences and you know their their frustrations and their successes and and you know all that sort of stuff uh, and it goes in so it goes in there um, so I use that all the time every day Hootsuite we're always using Hootsuite because we run social media accounts for for businesses um, and it's 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 an amazing tool for scheduling mm. um, social across all the uh, all all of the uh, all of the channels um, so we use Hootsuite uh, and then and then we we have a thing on our website called Pure Chat where you know we have the instant chat thing. So I have that on my phone. So if if a cus potential prospect, you know, customer hits the website and wants to chat, you know, they'll come through to me, or then it's routed off to one of one of the team. But normally it comes through to me first, um, and I love that kind of instant interaction with with, with someone. You know, they, they, yeah. they instantly they can they can get you know their uh, their their solution. Yeah, so, you've, just, you've just reminded yeah. me actually. When when we first spoke, I was going on your website as you often do when you're talking to somebody at the same time as I was talking, and I heard it bing, and it was your phone, and it was the chat box on my computer, and I knew it was me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and a bit. And do, do you know do you know why I love that? Because people these days want stuff instant. Yeah, you know, they don't want to wait for a response from an email. And we, we as a business, we created something called instant customer experience, and I call it ICE. So if you email us or you message us, you know, we'll, we will instantly. It doesn't always happen, but most most of the time, hit you back pretty instantly, because because that's how we like to run our business. You know, it, you know, if, if you're if you're coming to us with a question, we're going to give you an answer. Yeah. Um, so I like the pure chat thing because it means you know we're open for business seven days a week, you know, and uh, uh, and, and I like being open seven days a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. So what about if things don't go right? You sound um, quite sort of uh, relaxed and sorted, but I'm sure things go not so well on, on days. Um, how do you deal with that? I'm not relaxed and sorted. It's, just, it's, <laughs> it's all an act. It's a com <laughs> it is a complete act. Um, when, when things don't go well, um, uh, God, you know, it depends, depends how I feel, but, you know, oftentimes I try and take a step back one thing I have learned is not to react is to act so you know if something is not you know if something happens in your business and it will happen because that's business is do is just take a step back and just breathe and just be like, okay what do I do with this yeah um, and, and, and before I was so reactive to everything firing off emails or phoning people up or you know you know cutting people off you know in my 20s rah, 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 you know I don't like you know because people are complex individuals, you know, and and you know we all have emotions, and and uh, you know I've kind of learned that. So when things aren't going well, the the thing to do is step back from it, and then try and and then try and be honest about the situation, analyze it, you know, and write it down. You know, what is forget the emotion that clouds it. Without emotion, what is the problem? What what you know, what is not happening here that you know that that I want it to happen? And then, what action can I take to to, to improve it? Mm. And then, and then, and then go again. Yeah. Um, or sometimes I just get completely depressed about it, and I'll sit there for a day doing nothing. <laughs> if I'm honest, sometimes it, because it's like you know my brain's trying to work it out. You know, how do I yeah. deal with this? Yeah. You know, and I've had some huge problems to overcome. You know, over the over the course of my 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 business career from time to time. Um, and and they never you know. Brian Tracy is an amazing American author, and his thing about life is it's one problem, 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 but after problem with a crisis, and then a problem, 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 crisis. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and that's kind of how life works. It is, you know, we're we're here to solve problems, 
and, and as a business we solve problems for our customers so so that 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 never goes away so I try and be a better problem solver and I try and try and look at also what's good in in the problem you know what's it teaching me mm, mm. doesn't always work but but that you know the main thing is stepping back from it and just you know it, the, the, you know that that kind of whole sleeping on the problem and it, and then coming back to it tomorrow it is is a huge thing yeah i really love your honesty with that i think you know in the this day of uh you know social media and all the digital information that that's out there there's a a real thing isn't there about people you know putting the the shine on everything and it and it all looking wonderful and and you know it's something it can be quite damaging to people at times to to imagine that everything's going swimmingly for everybody else but not for them but actually everybody has those days don't they they do and i've worked with a lot of very successful people and celebrities and they have the same problem yeah mm. uh, and and this this is a major problem is comparing yourself to somebody else and i've done it you know so many times i wanted to be gary barlow you know, uh, you. With, his, with, his, with his multi-million pound fortune and his huge success in Take That because you know I started off as a you know as a singer in a band as well and that never happened for me but so many times I've looked at his life and gone you know my god but it, it, it's never like that it, it really isn't no um, yeah and, and actually as a business you know we, we we try and promote the honest side of it and actually have empathy for, for 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 people rather than you know going out there and everything's amazing because I don't believe life is like that. I, I don't believe it's supposed to be amazing all the time. Mm. I think it's it does send you know and it sent me some really nasty lessons from time to time. But then you you, you do come out of it and you do grow and you you do expand as a as a as a you know as a person. Mm. And that's the only way we can grow is through adversity. I believe. Yeah. by learning the lessons or you can sit there and cry about it but they ain't gonna ch no one's coming to save you that's the point you know and I believe that those lessons come to you to to learn and grow yes yeah. um, and only by experiencing them can you can you actually you know can you actually talk about it but yeah. most you know and I and, and, and they've never the lessons always keep coming but you know, I, I, I've actually found that, that it's quite a disarming um, approach, to be honest. Sometimes, in terms of you know my my own kind of temporary failure over the years, um, you know, it's become it's become the thread of my life really. Mm. Uh, so it's and a bit of a narrative in terms of my business now and the story that we tell is. All of the, the 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 temporary failures that I've had, and there's been so many, um, because that's obviously what I needed to learn, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So when I talk about it, you know, because there were people sat there listening to this podcast now that that are having a really tough time trying to launch their business, and the thing I would say to them is, respect. You know, you are a successful person if you continue. If you if if you you're there making it happen for yourself, you know, keep getting up in the morning, keep going after your dream, then that is the definition of success. Forget the money, forget celebrity or any any of that other stuff. If you're getting up and making it happen for yourself, you're successful. Yeah. And fair play too. Yeah, oh, I love that. Thank you. So to finish off then, on a, on a day when you end the day knowing you've had that chance to live more, so to do the stuff that you really want to do, not the stuff that you feel you should do or you have to do, what have you done? What does that day look like for you? You must start with yoga. <laughs> yeah, do you know, I do, <clears throat> do 90 minutes of yoga and I really don't care about anything. <laughs> so uh, I don't think every day can be, can be you know, massively um, successful. I just think some days you're going to have that feeling of God, it didn't go quite well. So, so it's always just then about getting up, you know, the next day and going after it again. Yeah. It's just the continuous, you know, never stopping, you know, always, always, always going after it, mm -hmm. um, just to try and make it a bit better. So, uh, there's a great technique I learned is at the end of the day is to replay the day, um, you know, in your mind, you know, what, what actually, what did I do well? What didn't I do well? And then there's another, so you do that, and there's a technique where you can replay it as if it was perfect. So do that, and then that creates a different feeling. So then you wake up the next day, and off you go again. 
Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, it, kind of kind of just tricking your mind into actually well, well, you know yeah yeah you know oh, I'm ready for it again, rather than that feeling of well I haven't done good enough I I, I don't I don't subscribe to, to that and I try not to I try not to get you know get too involved in what, what I haven't done so well rather than I try and focus on what I did do well. Yeah. Because that makes me feel good. Yeah. Which in you itself know, is motivational. Yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lovely. So um, just before we finish then, can you um, tell people how to find out more about you or to connect with you? Where would you like to send people? Absolutely. Go to themagicoctopus.co.uk, which is my digital company. And um, we just, we've just we got a new um, project we just launched called One Golden Nugget, which is, which is a book that I'm putting together, which is basically... Um, short stories and just pieces of life advice from entrepreneurs and celebrities um, and, and small business owners. You know, we're in those times of adversity. What did you learn in that moment? And they're sending us in and we're, gonna, we're writing a book and then giving the money to a mental health charity for kids called Young Minds. So we're doing that. So if anyone's listening and they've got a great life lesson they've learned, we'd love to, we'd love to read it and uh, possibly put it in the book. So yeah, either of those themagicoctopus.co.uk or onegoldennugget.com. Lovely. Thank you, Stephen. Really appreciate you joining me today. I really enjoyed it. Pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Use your power to live more. All this information is available in the show notes on the website, powertolivemore.com forward slash, in this case, 44. And the website is the place to go if you want to find out how I can help you to improve your productivity, organisation, wellbeing, energy and resilience, your power to live more. And that's about doing more of what you want to do. It's the beginning of 2018. And over the holiday, I put together a new course that you might be interested in accessing called How to Simplify Your Life and Get to Do More of What You Want. And it's free. Uh, so if you want to check it out and see what's covered, and whether it might be something to help you, then if you go to powertolivemore.com forward slash simplify free, then you'll be able to see the details of the curriculum for it. Uh, it's broken down over four weeks. So the idea is that you do it a little bit every week week rather than trying to do it all in one go and feeling even more overwhelmed as a result of trying to do something to try and resolve the overwhelm. Uh, So please do feel free to go and uh, log in and and have a go at that course Um, and also please do share it with anyone that you know who might be feeling a bit overwhelmed looking to do a bit of simplifying, a bit of decluttering, a bit of uh, perhaps some goal setting, some thinking about uh, what they want moving forwards. And uh, if they're, you know, on that sort of simplify route, I've heard a lot of people say that that seems to be one of the themes for this year for them. So if you've got somebody who's looking at that and wants a bit of help, uh, then please do forward it on powertolivemore.com forward slash simplify free. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you about it again next time. I'll probably bang on about it again for the next few weeks. So uh, again, the show notes for this uh, particular episode are at powertolivemore.com forward slash 44. And we look forward to speaking to you next time. Use your power to live more.